Hey guys, Joe here with Chris uh, for the good old gamer and tonight we are talking about DirectX 12 and why the AMD video cards seem to perform much better than Nvidia does in terms of when you jump from DirectX 11 to DirectX 12 and your performance gains. So the reason I am aware of this or you know the reason I think this is the case is because AMD has been building into their cards the whole async compute idea, uh, whatever. And that allows them to utilize the video card in a different fashion to really take advantage of DirectX 12 because of the way it, it processes its draw calls. However, you have said, Chris, uh, you have said to me at least a few things that lead me to question whether or not that's 100% true or if uh, maybe there's just a lot more to the story that I don't understand being a non-techie you know, techie guy uh, as, as you are. So I was hoping you might be able to explain it to me and uh, by extension our audience, uh, exactly why AMD cards do perform better than NVIDIA's when it comes to DirectX 12. Well, it's not that they necessarily perform better. I mean, a GTX 1080 is still faster than anything AMD has. Um, it's the reason why they gain so much of a performance boost. Asynchronous compute can be enabled, and that does help in certain titles, especially Ashes of the Singularity, which we were kind of talking about a little bit earlier. Uh, the benchmarks I did, it was very awkward because uh, in DirectX 11, on the the i7 2600K, the GTX 1070 actually performed better in DirectX 11 than DirectX 12, and it's just kind of a weird situation. The main reason why for NVIDIA there's really not much of a bump in most titles is because their DirectX 11 drivers have very little overhead, meaning the CPU is almost as free as it can possibly be anyway. AMD, on the other hand, is the exact opposite. Uh, their, C their drivers use so much CPU resources that it's it's a complete bottleneck. By itself, the drivers from AMD in DirectX 11 are their own bottleneck. Uh, a lot of people will go ahead and say things like uh, NVIDIA Gameworks throws a monkey wrench in there, and there's some proof supporting that, but you know we don't have any real evidence to say that definitively. But uh, for the most part, it's basically just AMD's driver overhead is just way too high, and that is bogging everything down. The reason why I brought up Ashes of the Singularity was because there's so many little things going on. This is where asynchronous compute really comes into play because you have hundreds and hundreds of units doing different things. Being able to address instructions out of order, basically that's what it does. It doesn't have to wait for one instruction to finish. It can go, okay, we're going to skip that and go to the next one, you know, and it can do them out of order and do multiple instructions at the same time. That will allow many things to be done at once. And that will net a performance gain, but from what we've seen in less demanding titles, meaning like a shooter or something where there's not tons of things going on on the screen, this should lead to only maybe a few percentage, single digit percentage point increases. The main reason why you see massive jumps is the elimination of the AMD driver. Basically because uh, DirectX 12 and Vulkan will, the game will directly access the hardware. It's in charge of that. It basically bypasses the driver. So it, it's pretty much just eliminating driver overhead and AMD cards will perform at the level that they're supposed to. For example, right now everybody looks at the RX 480 and the GTX 1060 and goes, okay, they're basically in the same ballpark. The 1060 is a little faster. While in reality, the RX 480 is significantly faster than the GTX 1060. You're looking at a 4.4 teraflop graphics card, which is the 1060, and a 5.8 teraflop graphics card that is the AMD card. Once you remove that driver overhead, the NVIDIA card will no longer be able to compete on the same level. It's literally going to be performance for performance, as long as the game is properly optimized. Uh, that's why at Doom and Vulkan, the RX 480 is closer to the GTX 1070 than it is the GTX 1060. Uh, you remove just all you do is you take AMD's drivers out of the equation and the graphics cards hardware is fully utilized and you're looking at basically a one to one match. So once that happens, Nvidia is going to have an extreme competitor back in the field. Now, there's a lot of rumors out there. People are thinking that Nvidia is going to come out with another Gameworks for DirectX 12, which they don't currently have, and try to hamper performance of AMD. This is all corporate espionage stuff. I don't get into that. But hopefully none of that's going on because that would be really shitty. Um, but we'll find out in time. But regardless, when AMD's cards don't have to deal with AMD's drivers, 
they are far more powerful. So if I'm understanding it correctly, and I just want to make sure to clarify, essentially these performance boosts we're seeing when we see these new benchmarks and stuff coming for the AMD cards, it's all kind of smoke and mirrors because AMD has been, I would say, unintentionally or unable to stop themselves from being hampered by their own drivers. So AMD's mantle, which now forced Vulcan and uh, DirectX 12, is essentially saving AMD from itself. And we're getting performance gains that we really should be getting proportionately, um, except for the fact that AMD has held itself back because of its drivers, whereas NVIDIA hasn't. So it's not like there's something about NVIDIA cards that are uh, not as good as AMD or there's something about AMD cards that are better than NVIDIA in the sense it's so as so much as it is it's literally just AMD has been holding themselves back one way or another for whatever reason and NVIDIA hasn't and so it looks like less of a gain for NVIDIA when in reality those are the gains we should be seeing um, it's just it it's just leveling the playing field is all it is right yeah okay yeah I get you you're taking out the crap in the middle leveling the playing field and uh i mean that's great i mean so it's not something it's not that nvidia has done something wrong and that's why they're not seeing such huge gains it's that amd's finally got something that's going to save them from themselves i, I would actually say it's because nvidia did something so right they did they had such efficient directx 11 drivers uh they were so good that directx 12 won't net them too much of a performance gain somewhere in the neighborhood of five to ten percent I get you. I mean, that it's there's still a little extra there to be had, but it's not near as much. You're not going to get that 40 or 50% gain like AMD does. Um, yeah, because their drivers, it's not, I mean, maybe NVIDIA just happened to hit the magic button and figure it out. I don't know. Uh, but clearly their drivers are far better for DirectX 11. Now, moving forward, all titles, pretty much all major titles this holiday season are going to be DirectX 12 capable. Uh, so pretty much from here on out, I don't really see that being too much of an issue anymore. We will know more later on uh, because it really will come down to the developers and how they uh, program their games to utilize the hardware. But for the most part, yes, we're just going to see a level playing field. And uh, this is great for AMD owners because your overpowered cards that they had to produce at lower price points are going to perform better. Um, like the uh, R9... 290 and uh, 290X, 390 and 390X, they're very powerful cards. And they're going to be doing much better in DirectX 12 once uh, once that overhead's gone. Same thing with the Fury cards, but you're kind of limited by RAM a little bit, especially at higher resolutions on those. But uh, yeah, basically AMD's been over-engineering cards for so long. That's why their cards kind of last longer because they had to produce a card that was like one and a half times as powerful at the same price point as NVIDIA's to compete. Well, you think they'd have just hired better engineers to do the drivers. Maybe, like I said, maybe it's one of those things that NVIDIA just happened to hit the magic luck on that and, and got it. I don't know on that one. Uh, I mean, it's just clear as day that that seems to be the thing. Well, AMD tried doing Mantle back in 2013 and uh, honestly, I don't know why they just didn't stick with that and just had Mantle be its own API. And, uh, you know, by now, most games would support it. But that's, once again, that's a whole corporate decision on their part. I, they just like to sabotage themselves. That I, I really don't know what their thought process was. Well, it sounds like they that. got what they wanted anyway. They, they may have come up with Mantle, and then they let NVIDIA and Microsoft do the work and produce an API that they could use. <laughs> to level the playing field. It sounds well, they, like they, are, exactly they already had wanted. the API. I mean, Vulcan basically is Mantle. They gave their API over. Yeah, and but it's less developed, I'm sure, at this point is what I'm getting at. Well, no, Mantle was already done. I mean, it could be in full swing. Could have been in full swing this whole time. Uh, they, for whatever reason, they just... Uh, they were hemorrhaging money, and they wanted to, you know, bring these developers that they... or these people that they used to send out to developers to help implement Mantle... Uh, basically, they just fired all of those guys, so they had no real way to push it out there and help developers the same way that you know Nvidia does with GameWorks. Uh, they just were running out of resources, so they sabotaged themselves. Basically, it that that's a whole nother mess. Uh, they did it to themselves. They could be much further ahead, you know, because while DirectX 11 was out and Nvidia had their great drivers, if they were using Mantle, it would have been a level playing field the whole time. And uh, unfortunately, they didn't do that. 
So hopefully now we will get that level playing field. NVIDIA's prices will have to come back to reality once they get competition. And because uh, I guarantee you, the R technically the RX 480 is right in between the GTX 1060 and the uh, GTX 1070 performance wise. And once, you, once we start seeing that on a regular basis, NVIDIA's whole price scheme is going to have to drop down. Even if they don't release another card, <laughs> NVIDIA's price scheme is going to have to drop down here in the not-too-distant future. Um, so once Vega comes out, it'll definitely be going down. And once again, like we said in our previous video, prices will come down. That's good for all of us. And uh, yeah, it sucks for them, but I don't really care. Saving us money is more important. Well, there you have it, guys. Uh, thank you for watching this video. If you like what we're doing, go ahead and like the video. If you really like what we're doing, feel free to subscribe to our channel. And if you don't like what we're doing, you can also put that in the comments. You could also like it. It's up to you. I'm not going to tell you not to. And uh, I just want to say thank you uh, from me. You guys have a good night, and thanks for watching. Have a good night, guys.